Hey, co-host Adrian here, and out of all the thousands of available podcasts, you're listening to this one because you love Evansville. Well, we obviously love Evansville too, but we can't tell these stories without the support of people like you. So before we get started with today's episode, we want to give you the opportunity to partner with our storytelling work here at For Evansville. Your donation will allow us to continue to share these unique stories about how people are working together to make Evansville a place where everyone can flourish. And the cool news is right now we have a $50,000 match, so any gift you give will be doubled. So help us complete the match before the end of the year by going to forevansville.org slash podcast partner, or you can find the link in the show notes. Thanks for being for Evansville. Hey, welcome to season three of the Four Evansville podcast. Um, I'm your host, Adrian Gregorich, and I'm here with Sarah Inman. I'm the director of operations here at Four Evansville. I've been over here just over a year. Three seasons, Adrian. Three seasons, yes. Whew. So we started back in 2021. We've had 35 episodes, uh, which is awesome. And yeah, we just want to use this podcast as a space to talk about the needs and dreams of Evansville. Absolutely. And even before I was a part of the team here at Fort Evansville, I was someone who just listened. And it's always just really unique and incredible for us to have people in here to get to hear about some of the great things that are happening in our city. Um, Sometimes maybe we hear the stories that aren't great, and there's a lot of great things happening and great people uh, who are making some of those things happen. What's some of our, what's our, what's the episode that is the most listened to? Well, actually, it's our very first one, which is Pursuing Racial Unity. So we're going full circle. Mm. Um, And this episode today, we're actually having a conversation um, about the Unity concert coming up. It's Black History Month. We want to celebrate uh, celebrate that together. Um, And there's a really cool opportunity that we talked to the director, James Hamler, of the Unity Choir, and that concert's coming up soon. Sarah, do you want to give us some details? Yeah, it's coming up on February 19th. If you're listening to this before February 19th, uh, make sure you just go to the Unity Concert. It's just something you can go to, be a part of, um, and just experience being uh, a part of that uh, event. But also, if you want to be, take part in it, anyone can be a part of the choir, and you can find more information at unityconcertevv.com. Yeah, so rehearsals haven't started yet. If you are listening to this when the episode drops, um, so it's just the four days leading up to the concert itself. It'll be at the, I'm excited um, to check it out. And if you're listening to this after February 19th, check out what next year's is going to be. There's probably a lot more ways that you can check out things that are happening in our city and ways that you can learn about the history of our city. And also this concert, which they'll get into this in the episode talks about the history of gospel music. And it's something that I was not familiar with. And I'm really excited to go check it out. Right. The concert's free actually. Um, but they will take a collection during the concert itself, and that's going to go towards the African American History Museum here in Evansville. So ties into that Black History Month and just celebrating that. So let's just dive right into the episode. Let's do it. Yeah, thanks for having us. My name is Ryan Stapleton, and I'm the uh, Worship and Technology Director at uh, Renew Christian Church. James and I uh, met a while back and have done music together, and I consider James one of uh, uh, just a great mentor and friend of mine, and I think it's a privilege to be able to work alongside him and trying to do these types of things in the city. My name is James Hamler, Jr. I am the Minister of Music at Nazarene Baptist Church here in Evansville, and uh, this is my 24th year leading the music there at Nazarene. So what well, you've led music there? You said twenty four years. Twenty four years. Wow, that's awesome. Is uh, what what's something that just thinking about being in Evansville twenty four years leading music? How's that changed in twenty four years? Mm, well, it, it's changed a lot. Yeah, <laughs> we've gotten some of the singers that were there when I first came were still there, so we've gotten a little older. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but but there are some there are some some younger newer singers that. Uh, appreciate a different style of music, and so I have to, I have to keep up with because yeah. I got to feed everybody's musical appetite, and so mm. it's it's been it's been it's been a joy. Good, I'm I'm interested to hear more about that because I think even the concert, you guys are celebrating music from many span, a span of many years. Yes, uh, before our music was called gospel music, it was 
uh, Negro spirituals. But before mm. they were called spirituals, they were called ring shouts. Mm. And I'd never heard of that before. I neither. And, uh, and so we're going to uh, include ring shouts in our, in our music. It was, it was um, the slaves would, would gather. Sometimes it, it may be one or two, and they would just ring out with these songs and shout, and people mm-hmm. could hear, and they join in, and before long you got four or five more gathered, and they're just joining in, and 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 before you know it, you've gotten a whole community of people together, and they're just they're just singing along and and having a good time, and and then when the Negro spiritual came along. Uh, there were a lot of hidden messages in the in the spirituals, and uh, you know they sing songs like "Steal Away," mm-hmm. and you know we got to have a secret meeting. You know uh, they would sing songs like "Meeting Tonight." There's going to be a meeting on the old campground, and so that's how they were able to communicate with the master, not really knowing what what they were talking about. Really, so we're gonna we're gonna cover. All those different types of music. And then it didn't become known as gospel music until 1928 with Dr. Thomas A. Dorsey. He wrote a song that that's, people still sing today called Precious Lord, Take My Hand. And um, But he was a blues musician. Hmm. And so when he started playing in churches... They, he was criticized by a lot of people. They was like, you're trying to bring, they called it boogie-woogie music. You're trying to bring <laughs> boogie-woogie into the, into the church. And, um, and so he was the father of what we call gospel music. Then in the 60s, the Hawkins family came along with the song you all probably familiar with, Oh Happy Day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that was the beginning of, the contemporary gospel gospel era. Then Kirk Franklin came along in probably nineties, mid nineties, with a, with a different style, and um, which became known as it's like urban contemporary. So we've gotten we've gotten all these all these different styles. There's even gospel rap now. Yeah, and um, and so. You'll find in some of our in some of our churches you'll find some of some of all of this all of these different mm-hmm. different styles of gospel music so it it's real exciting to me to to be able to to share share in this event and just to share the history of of what we now call gospel music yeah we like i said we're gonna start at the beginning and we want the all of our music to tell a story. So we're gonna go to the beginning and come okay. come to the present and tell a story without telling a story. Whatever your musical appetite is as far as gospel is concerned, you'll be able to find it at this this concert. We're gonna do hymns, anthem, uh slow songs, fast songs, some where you pat your hip, we call them hip right. slappers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so <laughs> yeah. excited. Well okay. and to that point as well if you are a person who doesn't listen to gospel music or doesn't know anything about gospel music this is the thing to come to to learn about gospel music yeah and you won't be bored you know if if you are a metal shred head <laughs> this is a concert for you if you're an acapella person this is a concert for you if you're a rap person this is a concert for you. if you're a country person this is a concert for you it really does have everything and it's super cool to see how it crosses all lines, even in genre. And it's, yeah, it's going to be a really, really fun and educational time. It's it's not a church service. You're not coming to a church service. But it is a celebration of gospel music as an American art form. Okay, okay, cool. I'm glad yeah. you said that because I, I, maybe I wasn't even aware of that because I think I was talking earlier, so I'm glad you, you made that clear. It's good. Yeah. What what do you expect? Like when you put a kind of an open call, anyone can be in the choir. What do you expect? Like, are you nervous about that? Of like, how many people could show up? Uh, no, it, it, it doesn't make me nervous. Once you cast a net, you have no control over who comes, mm-hmm. but you got to be prepared for what you for what you catch. Yeah. And so, um, do you have any idea based on signups how many uh, so far? 
Well, we have 20... 22 churches so far are represented within the choir. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. So the unity part is there, right? Yeah. How so cool is that? And yeah, talk about, let's talk about the unity part. Yeah. Um, unity between churches, but mm-hmm. also unity between races. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, let, talk about kind of your hopes and dreams for this event. Well, you, you just said it all. We get to... Um, to just try to unify our community through through several different ways, because um, there's so many things that divide us. Denominations divide us, but we're multiple denominations coming together. Um, we're multiracial, mm-hmm. multi generational. We got old, we got young, mm-hmm. and so this is a way to to bring everybody together. And music is the is the perfect way to do it, because music has no color mm-hmm. music is music and 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 I say this all the time about gospel music it's the only art form that's based on truth mm-hmm. and so we get to come together uh, to celebrate the truth of, of of the word of God and and we get to focus on what unites us rather than what divides us that's one of the keys we easily talk about you know, why this church may be different than this church. And as uh, even congregation members who are prescribed, self-prescribed church shoppers, mm-hmm. I like this church because they have this and this church because they have this. And, <clears throat> you know, as James was speaking about uh, the history of gospel music and where it came from, uh, as the three of us sitting here are white, it's easy to look back at our history in our churches and say, we're no different. Mm, sure. You know, we, we experienced a time in which Boogie Woogie music came in. We wouldn't define it as Boogie Woogie music. Rock and but roll. where, yes, <laughs> rock and roll was the devil's music, and there's yeah. no place for that in church. Mm-hmm. And we, we experienced church splits uh, as a result of trying to go from traditional style to contemporary style to whatever it may look like today. Mm-hmm. And that is still a struggle today that churches go through. And um, it's, we're not any different in our churches. We're we're really not. It's just how we view ourselves as being different. And I think there's a beauty to what God has created in diversity that we need to honor, especially in music, because it does cross all kinds of lines, and um, it doesn't really have them. So being able to sing next to someone who is just there to praise the Lord, that's all you need. And and it's really cool to be able to just focus on music. And when we think about unity in our city, you said 22 churches? Yes. That's incredible. Great job. Like, mm-hmm. that's amazing. Um, you know, even in our work here at Evansville, we're trying to, to bring people together um, to help solve needs in our city. And some of those things are sometimes just about getting in the same room and being together. And sometimes there are specific conversations, but, man, sometimes maybe it's just singing together. Can you guys talk about the importance of just unity in Evansville? Like, why is that important to you guys? Um. Well, it's important to me because I grew up in the South in a small town, and it was just like, you had people that didn't like each other. (laughs) But one thing I I remember from the South is that if somebody, if you needed somebody in our community, they were going to be there, even, even if... Even if you didn't like them or they didn't like you, <laughs> it was just like that was just the thing to do. Everybody spoke to everybody. Uh, and even now, I'm driving down the street. I see people. I'm just riding with my hand out the window. I'm waving at everybody, speaking to everybody, because that's just the way. That's the way I was. I was brought up. Even in our churches, there was there was there was unity, and I like to just get back to that to that time. I can remember. There were times when uh, there were events. You didn't know who was part of which choir because yeah. we all get together. If you didn't have all your people, I was like, okay, I'll sing with y'all. I'll help y'all. And I didn't have all my people, and you all came. And it's like, mm-hmm. and we just we just did that. And mm-hmm. um, and I did like a lot of community choirs and stuff was was birthed out of that. But they were all different denominations, sometimes different races. Uh, different ages, but but we came together. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and I I'd love to to see to see that. Like you know, there's division everywhere, and uh, and so I think it it's 
we come we've come together because to unify Evansville is our common goal. That's and that's that's why we do what we do because we yeah. want want to see you. The Bible says how how good and how pleasant it is for 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 men to dwell together in unity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a you know part of our role as worship pastors is to unify our congregation, and um, there's a bigger dream there that we share congregations, right? That uh, when I have worship at the exact same time that James is having worship across downtown. Uh, we're both singing to the same God. We may be singing, singing different words, but that that doesn't matter, right? We are having church together mm-hmm. if we consider ourselves together. Then if all of our churches can come together and praise together and show that we do the same things, we worship the same God, and that mm-hmm. we care about the love of Christ, and we care about one another. I'm also from the South, as James is, and which might be one reason we get along so well. And we're both from small towns. Uh, and I experienced the same thing where, as a little bitty kid, I could walk to the grocery store, my mom would lose me and not know where I was, but she knew I was safe because I was in this little bitty town where everybody takes care of each other. And I long desire that for Evansville as well, the place that I live. And uh, I've not been in Evansville as long as James uh, but Evansville opened its arms to me, and uh, it's been a, a wonderful place to live and be a part of a community. So to see that grow in love is absolutely something that I desire. So, James, I'd like to know, since you've been here 24 years and in the same role, essentially, how have you seen Evansville change hmm. and grow um, in in the area of unity uh, these past 24 years? Well, I can say personally that I have grown. Mm. I've grown a lot myself. Um, And I had to become intentional about building relationships with people that don't look like me. Mm. And um, I had some struggles early on. Um, Again, being from the South, I mentioned unity in the South. Hmm. Uh, what I didn't mention was that it was among races, but we didn't we didn't do a whole lot of uh, crossing mm. racial lines. Mm. Yeah, and uh, and so I did have a, uh, there were there were white people that I was close to, but we didn't go to church together. Uh, we didn't stay at each other's houses. And uh, and we did not date. <laughs> so when I moved here and I saw all these interracial couples, I was struggling because mm. yeah. I was not I was not used to that. And um, and so I had to become uh, intentional about getting past stuff like that. So I had to grow sure. personally. Um, and there was a guy who was a deacon at our church at the time. He's moved away now. He said something that just made all the sense in the world to me. He said that all white people are not against you, just like all black people are not for you. And he said it without even thinking anything about it, but that that meant a lot to me. And and I just opened myself up to um, experience some new things with some new people, different people, and and it has been it's been awesome. So I had to I had to grow myself sure. in order to to even see and experience growth in 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 others. Okay. And so that's that's been a really good experience for me. Do you think the the culture of Evansville has changed at all as well? Yeah. I'm, I, I I see it a lot. Um, good and bad. Mm. You know, um, as far as as, as uh, creating a culture that 
that's accepting of everybody. I think we've grown a lot in that in that area, um, but there's some things about our culture that has gone gone uh, backwards. Okay. Um, like our crime rate has increased. It wasn't it wasn't as high as it is when I was when I first moved here. And that's one of the things I loved about Evansville. Mm-hmm. They had low crime rate. But we gotta keep we gotta keep working and pressing forward. Sure. Yeah, and creating opportunities like what you guys are doing to just be together. I love the idea and concept of the Unity concert. Um and that's once a year, you know, if you guys are doing it once a year. I would I'd love to know kind of what your heart is or maybe hopes and dreams you have for kind of practicing unity in and being intentional inside and outside of the church um just kind of all year round how can we how can we practice that i'd love to challenge myself more as well well i think one way james and i try to do that is if an opportunity arises for us in our vocation you know hey would you come lead worship at this conference or would you come uh sing at this event James and I oftentimes try to involve each other's churches together, mm-hmm. and I think that, um, and that's not always just closed between Renew and Nazarene. I think that's definitely an open door that you know I, I would encourage anyone who's a church leader listening to this that if you have something special, different happening, involve another church. Ask their worship team to come be a part with your worship team uh, in, in music. That's one really cool way to try. That's yeah. a tangible way. That's one way that our um, teams have gotten to know each other and gotten comfortable with one another and realize, oh, you're just another person. You know, just participate in life together. And I like just practice random acts of kindness. Yeah, you're really king you of know, that. Um, <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to know you. You don't have to look like. You don't have to look like me. And um, just, just try to show kindness and love to every, everybody. You know, that's that's one way of of unifying people it's just just be kind yeah. show you know random acts of kindness and 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 show people i'm not as bad as you might think i am or yeah i don't i don't think of you as you might think i do mm-hmm. you know and yeah. and i believe we can change Evansville one relationship at a time mm-hmm. that's good that's really good well, thanks so much, guys, for being on the podcast. Well, thank um, you. Yeah. hope I didn't talk too much. No. That was no, your job, James. <laughs> <laughs> that's what podcast are. We're looking forward to the Unity concert. So thanks for all of the work that you guys are both doing before Evansville. And thanks to our listeners for listening. And you all can sit, come sing in the Unity yeah. concert. I think I'll just attend. I definitely want to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll join in the song. February 19th, right? Sunday, yeah. February 19th, Old National Mids Plaza, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock.